The top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. vows strong political will for the success of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM. House of Representatives aims to focus on its oversight functions and will investigate issues related to national security and economic development after it has resumed its session. The Philippine National Police confirms that the slay case of radio broadcaster Juan Homalon alias Johnny Walker is now solved. And we will discover why the World Central Kitchen, or WCK, decided to resume its operations in Gaza after a month since seven workers were killed in an Israeli airstrike. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, the 29th of April, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Marielle Latoza. We are also seen in 1,835 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Mavian Dong. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. ensured support for the success of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM. The president also appealed to BARM to participate in the upcoming first parliamentary elections next year. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. vowed to exercise strong political will for the success of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM as he called for a whole-of-society approach and a partnership between the government and the local residents to bring progress in the region. It requires a strong political will and as president, I will exercise that strong political will for the success of the Bangsamoro Region. President Marcos said this in his speech during the 10th anniversary of the signing of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro or CAB. The President also said that long-lasting peace can be sustained with a scoreboard of development. He also reiterated his commitment to the normalization of the Bangsamoro communities, especially to the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF and the Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF members. The chief executive further called on Bangsamoro residents to exercise their right to suffrage in the coming polls. PBBM ensured that it will be peaceful and orderly as he warned those who plan to derail the democratic process. Let this also serve as a warning to those who may plan to threaten and derail this upcoming election. Wag nyo nang isipin yan, dahil ang kakalabanin na ninyo ay ang pamahalaan. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. After more than a month of adjournment, the House of Representatives has resumed a session. Speaker Martin Romualdo says the House will focus on its oversight functions and will investigate issues related to national security and economic development. Rosalie Cause will tell us why. Since the House of Representatives approved all 20 priority measures presented by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and the Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council before the congressional break in March, the House will now focus on strengthening national security and economic development. This was announced by House Speaker Martin Romualdez on the first day of the resumption of the session, Monday, April 29. As part of this, the Speaker stressed that the House will now investigate the alleged gentleman agreement between former President Rodrigo Duterte and China regarding the West Philippine Sea, particularly the alleged prohibition on repairing the BRP Sierra Madre, which is in the country's exclusive economic zone. This is to identify its significant impact on sovereignty and territorial integrity. The so-called gentleman's agreement between the former president and China on the non-supply of the BRP Sierra Madre grounded in a union show in the West Philippine Sea is tantamount to the surrender of our country's sovereign rights 
over our exclusive economic zone. In a press conference, the House leader said top officials of the former administration will be invited in the hearing. We can start out with the past officials because they are also the ones who should execute if there is an agreement. They should be the foreign affairs, the executive secretary, if there is an EO. Diba? At saka yung mga nagsalita <laughs> na meron. Pero yung iba, meron din yung isang press secretary na nagsalita na uh, meron. Yung isa naman, wala naman daw. So ano ba talaga? Nabubudol-budol na naman. Two resolutions have been filed in the House of Representatives to investigate the alleged agreement. One was filed by lawmakers from the Makabayan Bloc and the other was filed by Sambales First District Representative Jefferson Konghun, House Assistant Majority Leader. Meanwhile, apart from this, the Committee on Information and Communications Technology and the Committee on Public Information were also instructed to conduct a joint inquiry regarding the reported cyber attacks on government websites. This is also to pass legislation to improve the government's countermeasures against cybersecurity threats. Regarding the primary concern of citizens about the rising prices of essential commodities, the House will investigate the wide gap between farm gate and retail prices of rice and other basic goods. This was initiated earlier by the House Committee on Trade and Industry. The farm gate prices of rice, poultry, pork, and even onions have been maintained for the past three months so there should be no spike in the prices of these items. The House should look into the price discrepancy in the exercise of its oversight function to conduct a thorough review of existing laws to protect the interests of both consumers and producers and to deter profiteering. The empirical evidence shows that uh, there are some sectors or people or uh, uh, some middlemen that are clearly profiteering from these activities. So uh, it's our first hearing today and uh, it will be followed by uh, hearings uh, hopefully next week along with the uh, uh, department, uh, along with the Committee of Agriculture because uh, this morning was only a hearing conducted by the uh, Committee on Trade. The Speaker promises to go after those who are exploiting the prices of goods. He expressed the need for traders and middlemen to explain why farm gate prices are low but some products in the market are priced high. Masyadong malayo ang ano, yung diferensya. So, i-inquire natin kung bakit ganun. Kung hindi maayos yung explanation, kung uh, ma masyado matakaw lang sa, sa kita, eh, sabihin natin, i-moderate nila yan. Kasi kung hindi, talagang uh, agrabyado tayo lahat. At uh, siyempre, may mananagot dyan. Diba? Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines received its newest mobile air surveillance radar equipment from Japan on Monday, April 29, adding the country's or adding to the country's detection mechanism for naval and aerial threats. The TPS P14ME, a mobile long-range air surveillance radar from Japan, is now stationed at Camp Aguinaldo in Quezon City. This is the second radar system to arrive in the country. Colonel Maria Consuelo Castillo, Philippine Air Force spokesperson, said that the advantage of this latest radar acquired is that it can be deployed on many areas of the country, even remote areas. She added that it can also be deployed in the areas near the West Philippine Sea. Well, it's possible that we can also deploy it in uh, areas of uh, the West Philippine Sea given that we have a platform that can accommodate its size and its weight. Furthermore, this mobile radar system is capable of detecting and monitoring activities in the air and even in maritime areas. Transport Group Manivela has revealed that they will have discussion with Congress and Senate for possible extension of their franchises with looming deadline tomorrow. JP Nunez will tell us why. 
even if the deadline for franchise consolidation of public utility vehicles will be tomorrow, April 30, the transport group Manibela is still not losing its hope that the franchises of traditional jeepneys will be revoked right after the deadline. Its chairman, Mar Valbuena, revealed that they have discussion with Congress and the Senate on possible extension of franchise. While negotiation is on the way, they will not join the transport group Piston. While negotiation is on the way, they will not join the transport group Piston in their three-day transport strike which is scheduled until May 1. Meron ding uh, inihahandang pag-uusap ang Kongreso at uh, sa Senado na ipinaalam din sa atin. Ito po yung inaasahan natin na, na magiging negosasyon para ho tayo po ay ma-extend. So, ang pangit naman na may negosasyon tapos ay mag strike pa rin kami. According to Valbuena, they continue their clamor to the president to scrap the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program or PUVMP. They appeal that instead of conducting force consolidation, the government should give operators their free will to join transport cooperatives. He mentioned that even if they were not consolidated, they have modernized a traditional jeepney and retained its iconic look, emphasizing the absence of subsidy from the government. Tigil na yung consolidation pero ipagpatuloy yung aming prangkisa, ipagpatuloy yung aming mga, mga provisional authority. Ang sabi nga sa Congress, walang basihan na yung aming mga prangkisa ay palitan ng provisional authority. The Department of Transportation or DOTR is firm with the deadline of consolidation tomorrow. After the deadline, traditional jeepneys which are not consolidated will be considered as colorum vehicles. They may still ply their routes come May 1 but they will still end up with the revocation of their franchise. Ang uh, pinaka end point sa consolidation is April 30. After that, pwede ka pa pumasada Pero pag binigay na sa iyo yung revocation, even the consolidation, hindi mo na pwedeng magawa. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Laban! 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 In the first day of the transport strike launched by several transport groups, Peace has prevailed. While the Philippine National Police or PNP has monitored instances of harassment and obstruction against some jeepney drivers who chose to ply their routes instead of joining the strike. According to PNP Public Information Police or Office Chief Police Colonel Colonel Jean Fajardo, if the PNP receives complaints from affected drivers, they may potentially file cases against the offending drivers. Tinetreten pa po sila ng, uh, doon sa mga kumakausap sa kanila pag hinarang po yung uh, kanilang uh, mga sasakyan. So they may be liable for uh, uh, grave coercion, threats, and even kung may mga masira po yung mga sasakyan po nila ay uh, definitely additional case ng damage to property po ang po pwede pong maisampa po sa kanila. Colonel Fajardo appealed to those participating in the strike to respect the rights of other drivers to operate their vehicles. A total of 51,402 PNP personnel have been deployed nationwide to ensure the security of the transport strike, with 1,780 mobility assets distributed to assist commuters. The transport strike commenced today and is expected to last until May 1. This is still related to the deadline set by the president regarding the jeepney modernization, which is due tomorrow. And for the news abroad. After a month since workers were killed in an Israeli airstrike, the World Central Kitchen, or WCK, will resume its operations in Gaza. The United States-based charity said on Sunday, April 28, that 276 trucks will almost, or with almost 8 million meals are ready to enter through the Rafah crossing. 
WCK also plans to send trucks into Gaza through Jordan, where a humanitarian zone has been designated by the Israeli military for civilians. The charity's chief executive officer, Aaron Gores, stated that the humanitarian situation in Gaza remains Gaza. Therefore, they will continue their operation to feed as many people as possible with the same energy, dignity, and focus. This despite not receiving concrete assurances on the April 1st attack and whether the Israeli military's operations have changed, Gore added. A local team of Palestinian aid workers will also be involved in WCK's resumption of its operations. Prior to halting its operations, the World Central Kitchen had distributed more than 43 million meals in Gaza since October. Britain's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is expected to announce a crackdown on cash payments to people with mild mental health conditions. The government believes such health conditions should not deter Britons from working. Maven Carrizo will tell us why. Britain's Personal Independent Payment, or PIP, is facing changes expected to be announced in the coming days. It is one of the ways Britons can seek financial help from the government for disability, which is distinct from incapacity benefit. The latter is paid to people who are too ill to work. Work and Pension Secretary Mel Stride will address the comments on Tuesday, April 30, about the proposed changes that are being published in a green paper consultation. One of the proposed changes to PIP is replacing cash payments with vouchers or treatment while receipts may now become a requirement to claim money back from the state. Reference is expected to be made to models in other countries like New Zealand, where a health practitioner verifies extra costs, or Norway, where cost associated with medical condition is outlined in a GP's letter. Around 2.6 million working-age Britons currently receive PIP monthly. As more people, including those with mental health concerns, qualify for the support, the annual cost of the PIP could rise by 50% in four years. Roughly 360,000 people claim PIP for anxiety and depression, double the number for five years ago, while also triple the number of people with all cancers combined receiving the payment. Mr. Stride states that over-labeling of mental health conditions has caused the growth in PIP recipients. He suggests that taking therapies, social care packages, respite care and other options could be alternatives to cash payments. When asked where the alternative support will come from, he insisted that the fundamental reason for the changes was helping people to get back into work, rather than cost cutting. He, however, acknowledged that money will still be a factor given that the projected 63% increase in PIP spend is a huge amount of money. The proposed changes support Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's moral mission to reform the welfare system and put an end to Britain's sick note culture. May Vin Cariso, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Department of Migrant Workers Secretary Hans Leo Kaktak was thankful for the support he received from the people when he was appointed to the position. He also mentioned that the agency has the digitalization plan to make their transactions easier for OFWs. Jed Nelesina details why. This morning, April 29, the Department of Migrant Workers Secretary Hans Leo Kakdak led the agency's flag raising ceremony in his first day as secretary. He was thankful for the support he received from the people when he was appointed to the position. Of course, it's so it has been an honor just to be named OIC. That's been a tremendous honor, and and this continues to be a, a an honor, and and uh, we'll make it work. Secretary Kaktak says he will continue his current job with the agency after appointment as new secretary. He also appreciated the service of every employee working at PMW. 
Sakdak said that they will continue the honorable work, especially for our overseas Filipino workers or OFWs. Gusto ko lang sabihin na patuloy lang ang trabaho. No? Tayo ay uh, patuloy na maglilingkod. Uh, please bear in mind na walang dumadaan na araw na hindi ko kinikilala ang inyong serbisyo at trabaho. Basta patuloy lang. Ano? Patuloy lang ang ating marangal na pag pagsagawa ng trabaho natin. Moreover, the agency plans to digitalize the recruitment processes to help facilitate operations when it comes to employment abroad. One more point is the matter on digitalization, uh, which means uh, fast-tracking and making expedient the, the processes no, that we will take uh, in so far as OFW convenience uh, in relation to OFW protective processes are concerned. Kakdak adds that it will also help recruitment sectors to facilitate their tracking of transactions. We will also make it easier for the stakeholders in overseas employment, uh, namely the, the recruitment sector and other stakeholders in terms of fast-tracking yung mga processes that are related to our regulatory functions. At the end of the day, ang makikinabang din ito, mga OFWs, kung digitalized at mas mabilis ang proseso. As the new secretary, Kakdak assured that the agency will implement stricter regulations to protect OFWs from human trafficking and illegal recruitment. Jed Neresina, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police confirms that Homalan's Lake case is now solved. This after the arrest of the third and primary suspect of the killing of radio broadcaster Juan Homalon, alias Johnny Walker. PNP Public Information Office Chief Police Colonel Jean Fajardo said the suspect, alias Ricky, was arrested in Dipolog City this morning, April 29. Okay, solved po ito dahil kung sa parameters po ng uh, PNP, ang isang uh, kaso po ay nakukonsidered case uh, close kapag ka ang uh, suspect po ay na-identify at uh, napa isa ilalim po sa PNP custody at na-file po yung kaso. Pero hindi pa po ito sarado dahil gaya nga po lang sinabi ko, meron pa po tayong tinitignan na mastermind na nagutos dito sa mga suspects na pinaniniwalaan nating mga miyembro po ng Gun for Hire Groups. A background check showed that Alias Riki has outstanding warrant of arrest for murder, frustrated murder, direct assault, and drug charges. Two other suspects, Alias Bobo and Alias Inteng, were arrested last March 15 in Masamis Occidental. The PNP is still investigating on the mastermind and motive of the crime. The Philippine Army disclosed that they are learning a lot in the ongoing Balikatan exercises, particularly in territorial defense. Dante Amento tells us why. Philippine Army Chief Lieutenant General Roy Galido reiterated that they are shifting from internal to territorial defense. In the ongoing Balikatan exercises, they sent around 1,800 participants, including officials. Galido explained that they learned more about using modern military or warfare equipment that can be used to thwart intrusion and threats in the Philippine territory. Now, when we shift or lilipat tayo sa role na territorial defense, ibang klaseng kagamitan ang dapat natin ihanda kasi ang kagamitan na pandigma ay dapat akma sa kagamitan din ng pwedeng sumakop sa atin o kung pwedeng manggulo sa atin. Dapat kakayanin natin mahinto ma yung pwersa na ganun. The Army Chief further said the country is preparing to protect its interests and people. Hence, there is a need to improve or elevate the capability of the armed forces such as the Army. Ito yung mga kagamitan na inaasam-asam ng ating katihan para magampanan ang role natin na protektahan ng ating bansa. Meanwhile, the United States or U.S. Army, which is a counterpart in this valuable endeavor, 
assures its commitment when it comes to cooperation with the Philippines. We are uh, acting responsibly. We are, we are doing our, our work together as teammates and we're learning from one another. And I think the value of that is just exponential uh, and, and it really is the way for us to continue to create a safe, secure and peaceful environment. Both the Philippine and U.S. Army clarified that the strengthening of territorial defense has nothing to do with the issue of the West Philippine Sea. Dante Amento Join TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And in other global news, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, is scheduled to return to the United Kingdom in May for the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. Founded by the British Prince, the Invictus Games aims to support the recovery of wounded and sick service personnel and veterans. Prince Harry last visited the United Kingdom in February to visit his father, King Charles, following his cancer diagnosis. United States President Joe Biden delivered a speech at the annual White House Correspondents Association dinner as the United States gears up for this year's election. President Biden utilized the traditional light-hearted occasion to poke fun at his Republican rival Donald Trump, using their ages as a point of jest. He also referenced Trump's illegal troubles, accusing him of attempting to conceal the $130,000 paid to porn star Stormy Daniels before winning the presidency in 2016. Of course, the 2024 election is in full swing. And yes, age is an issue. I'm a grown man running against a six-year-old. Age is the only thing we have in common. My vice president actually endorses me. I had a great stretch since the State of the Union. Well, Donald has had a few tough days lately. You might call it stormy weather. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. Dr. Joseph Lee, UNTV's in-house host, was honored at the Thailand International Leadership Awards 2024 held in Bangkok, Thailand. Meanwhile, UNTV Public Service Channel was also recognized as the most outstanding international media network. RK Lyorka will tell us why. Dr. Joseph Lee, UNTV's esteemed in-house doctor and host, was honored with the title Asia's Man of Remarkable Excellence in Urology Healthcare Leadership and Most Iconic Medical Celebrity Doctor Ambassador of the Year. This prestigious recognition was bestowed upon him at the Thailand International Leadership Awards 2024 held in Bangkok, Thailand last Saturday, April 27. Dr. Joseph expressed profound gratitude for this inaugural international award. Actually, there is a funny incident na tinanong ko pa kung scam. Kasi, di ba, uso ng scam, di ba? So sabi ko, ano ba ito? Scam ba ito? O uh, dinojoke nyo ko, do? So hanggat nag-reply sila, at kasi yung uh, Philippine delegate na nag uh, na nag-aayos nito na papuntang Thailand, sabi niya, ah, hindi po kasi talaga po pinili ka at ganun ang mga criteria. Sabi ko, ah, o sige, natuwa naman ako. Kasi um, this is my first uh, out of the country uh, award. no So, very elated at masaya. Born in Laguna and raised in Quezon City, Dr. Joseph boasts 22 years of experience in delivering medical services. The Thailand International Leadership Awards, an annual event, aims to honor individuals with outstanding achievements in various fields including education, business, public service, medicine, and more. 
In its second year, notable personalities from the Philippines and neighboring countries attended the event, including Police Colonel Salman Sapal, Maguindanao del Norte Police Director, former Chief of Police and Police Lieutenant Colonel Ronaldo Lomactod, and Quezon City Counselor and Medical Doctor, Dr. Dorothy Delarmente. Also recognized during the awards night was Ms. Ileana Aduana, Ms. Earth Air 2023, hailed as Asia's Most Empowered Young Women Environmentalist Icon Awardee of the Year. Moreover, UNTV Public Service Channel was honored as an outstanding international media network with yours truly recognized as Most Promising Media Correspondent. The UNTV Thailand team extends its heartfelt gratitude for this inaugural international accolade. And we've been in Thailand for a uh, few years. Um, I've been in Thailand for eight years and it's been like 10 years or more than 10 years. And it's the first time that we receive an international award like this. Well, on behalf of UNTV Public Service Channel Philippines and worldwide, we are very honored and pleased to receive this award. Of course, this would not be possible without the help and support of UNTV CEO uh, Kuya Daniel Nazon, Kuya Daniel S. Nazon, and the support as well of the Members Church of God International or MCGI. Well, uh, as what we always say, we will continue serving humanity and God. Thank you so much. To God be the glory. Dr. Joseph extends his gratitude to those who believe in his service advocacy. For the doctor, this recognition signifies a significant responsibility and indication to remain vigilant and empathetic towards his patients in providing even more medical services. I'd like to thank the organizers of the Thailand International Leadership Award, which is being held uh, now in Thailand first and foremost for nominating me and second is for believing my uh, medical public uh, service advocacy. Uh, This award is uh, a great um, responsibility beyond uh, achievements and accolades. It tells you that uh, you have to be more vigilant and be empathic to your patients and give more service. Thank you. Indeed, the excellence of Filipinos, whether in the field of science, academics, or leadership, knows no bounds. Like Dr. Joseph Lee, who believes that true honor lies not in the medal, but in noble advocacy. RK Liorca, UNTV News and Rescue, Bangkok, Thailand. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Last Sunday, OPM artists made their Wish Day debut and were taken aback by the warm reception from the crowd, rendering their first Wish Day performance truly unforgettable. Gladys Tawabi reports. Another captivating tale unfolded through Wish Date Unexpected at the SM Mall of Asia Arena yesterday. An unexpected twist surprised the wishers. But what pleasantly surprised the OPM artists, who just experienced their first Wish Date, was the warm reception from the wishers. Masaya. Um, if you watch the show, uh, we And uh, we're thankful to the crowd that joined in din sa mga songs namin and the performance. Um, we're happy. We nakita niyo naman siguro. And uh, yun, grateful lang na mapasama kami dito. As a first time performer sa Wish Day, tapos first time din sa Mawa. Um, sobrang saya kasi ang ang wild ng mga tao and sobrang nakita ko naman na sobrang happy silang lahat. Yeah, it's a great show. For these artists, Wish 107.5 and KDR Music House serve as platforms that can catapult both small and big local artists onto the global stage. We're just so thankful sa ganong klaseng support, especially now na sinasabi nila, patay na daw OPM, but definitely hindi. Kayo rin yung daan namin para makilala globally, kasi uh, hindi lang naman yung Pilipinas kayo man eh. Thank you po KDR Music House and sa Wish. Uh, thank you for continuously using your platform po to promote 
artists, no matter how small or big they are in the industry. Very thankful po kami na we crossed paths with Wish and the KDR Music House. Kaya maraming salamat po sa opportunity. Meanwhile, Riza Fokker's son, who portrayed the role of Julia, shared how smooth and hassle-free her experience was. All thanks to Wish 107.5 and KDR Music House during her first acting stint through Wish Day to Unexpected. Nakalabas ako sa comfort zone ko. Gusto ko to itry. So, binigay siya na opportunity sa akin ni God and why not to try it? Nasabi siya sa akin two weeks before the shoot. Um, yung nakita ko yung script, syempre hindi naman ako sanay mag-acting. Uh, yung brother ko lang naman yung nag-act sa amin. Siguro pinosesyon ko lang yung sarili ko dun sa character. Very comfortable ako to work. Kumbaga, sa lahat talaga na nagkasama ko sa work. And kumbaga, um, no hassle, okay siya. Kumbaga, hindi ako nahirapan i-adopt yung pangyayari. For those who missed the 12th installment of the Wish Day concert, stay tuned for its digital live streaming. Expect to be surprised by its unexpected plot twist, all centered around the theme of love. Gladys Tuwabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Our Kasang Bahai. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 2, it says, He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. And those are the reasons behind the news April 29, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Avian Dog, live from Australia. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Mariela Toza, live from Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God. <laughs>